quite how this wreck site has become known as that of the Brigantine Magic, I'm not entirely sure. It's not listed on the Charters Magic and Lloyd's Shipwreck Index puts it almost on the beach by New Haven Harbour Arm. The casualty report so puts it in the right area, off Portobello near to Peacehaven. Shortly after the magic went missing in September 1912, a submerged wreck was found in about 18 metres of water five miles southwest of Portobello. A Mr. Kieran Ander found a capstan bar near the half brick pub on Worthing Seafront bearing the name Magic. He reported it to the Coast Guard who went on to find a considerable amount of wreckage between Worthing and Littlehampton. This wreck is only two and a half miles from the Portobello. We got the name from a chap called Ted Creed, who's sadly no longer with us, to ask him about it. Well, Ted was a fisherman and a diver who managed to find some bells during his time underwater, so perhaps he knew something we don't, which to be honest isn't going to be that difficult. But based on that and the general position of the wreck, um, what looks to be uh, granite ships, which was a ship's cargo, and the fact that in 1912 positions were far from accurate, I'm going to presume that this is the, this is the, the uh, wreck site of the Brigantine Magic. So until someone says or someone finds something to prove otherwise, that's what we're going to call it. Well, the Magic, it was built by James Duncan in the Mount Stewart area of Prince Edward Island, Canada, in November 1876. It would have actually been one of the last wooden ships he built. It was only a few years later that James Duncan ended up being jailed for a short time and all his assets seized because he wasn't uh, making any money on the uh, ships he was building. By 1876, the era of sale was almost at an end. Uh, Magic probably sold at a loss for him. The Magic had countless owners over the years. A Mr. F.C. Clothier of Whitstable bought it in 1900, and by February 1903, it was sold again to another Whitstable resident, H.L. Daly, who owned the People's Store, a grocery at 87 High Street, Whitstable. Um, now, I looked this up thinking it would be a barber's, a charity shop, or an estate agent, and it's actually an estate agent. Daly had Captain George Williams to work the ship. Uh, they had already worked together for about 25 years, so Daly uh, evidently wasn't new to the shipping business, it seems. It was on a voyage from Cherbourg to Whitstable with a cargo of granite chips when it was lost, September the 29th, 1912. As well as wreckage picked up further west down the coast, wreckage was also allegedly picked up at Newhaven. This was reported in the Whitstable Times and Herne Bay Herald. It was said that a woman's figurehead was washed ashore, which corresponded with the magic, while well, several other items bore its name. A case of dried apples, a ship's barometer, cooking utensils and other parts that would have made up the deck house of a small coaster were found. When interviewed after hearing this news, Mr Daly said there was no hope now and Captain Williams and the crew of eight must have gone down after a collision. I don't know what Jamie's dug out here. I don't know what any of his ship is to be honest, other than the gunnels and some wooden deck beams and you know, there's some chain. I can't really tell you what any of it is. The names of the crew aren't actually known. At that time on ships, every six months the ship's articles which is like who's, uh, who signed on, uh, their names, what wages they're going to get, uh, duration, how long they're going to be on the ship, would have been deposited to the Board of Trade. But during the periods intervening, new hands were simply signed on, on board a ship when it was out. So when the magic sank, all the ship's papers uh, were lost along with the names of all the crew. It wasn't clearly established, but it was believed that the mate was a Mr. Bert Howland of Whitstable. Bert's father had heard rumours from friends that his son had joined the magic for the first time on the outward voyage to Cherbourg. 
did find though that Bert Howland was mate uh, aboard the Magic in 1908, but he deserted the ship after drawing more money than he had earned. Captain George Williams gave evidence that Bert had caused a lot of trouble causing the Magic to be held up for an entire day. So did they take Bert back on again? I don't know, but he was fined £2 for the trouble he caused. So what happened to the magic? Well, weather reports for the day of a loss or of a great storm raging in the channel and right across the country. Reports of large steamers being battered by the storm, the Navy at Bover, Bover having a hard time with it. And at the bottom of all these reports is the wreckage from the magic case of dried apples in the barometer, but this time it is reported as having been washed ashore at East Preston, just west of Worthing. Well, I don't know which uh, wreckage reports to believe, but all reports for the wreck itself put magic off Portobello. And laying on a sandy seabed, the cargo of what looks like granite chips or stones is it's another clue that this could well be magic. You know, in a fierce storm with a cargo of granite chips weighing them down, perhaps they were running for the safety of New Haven Harbour and were just simply overwhelmed by the storm. 